Hello, how are you guys today? We're gonna do another full day of eating. This time, not gonna show as much prep, just to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. So, today's kind of messed up already because I had to wake up and film and do computer stuff for like three hours. I wanted to have my morning testicle testosterone routine before, but it was really cold, so I wanted to just let it sit at room temperature so it doesn't mess up my stomach at all. And also, didn't have dinner last night, which is a little unusual, so I'm hungry, but I'm so overdue on this testosterone routine. Haven't done it for like uh, two weeks now. I really need the energy. I need the testosterone boost because I kind of wanted to have breakfast, but you don't want to eat this and then have a big meal because you want this to be the only thing in your stomach, just absorbing the testosterone at a maximum efficiency. So, And we did this routine a few weeks ago in my three morning routines video, so... Uh, this might seem a little repetitive, but uh, we just took our lamb testicle from Frankie's Free Range Meat. We chopped it up so we don't have to chew it. We're just going to swallow it down. Uh, we have the goat testicles and the veal testicles available as well. Uh, for some reason, you guys keep asking me for the beef, which we will have later this month. But uh, me personally, I prefer the lamb and the, the veal over the beef. So we're just going to swallow this down while holding my nose so I don't taste it. So we swallowed it down. Now we're going to take some mastic gum. So we got our testosterone boost without tasting it. So I'm going to take a few supplements with the testicle and I'll explain each one. So first, vitamin C. Uh, we did a video a few months back. Uh, you know, is vitamin C causing your gut issues uh, relating to H. pylori? And uh, I think I really need to up the vitamin C and take it with some masticum every morning consistently. With that, we're going to take magnesium, the mineral you need in the most abundance. And I'm also going to take uh, B-complex because, you know, with my impaired liver function and digestion, I think I'm falling behind a little bit on the B vitamins. So that's three capsules. Uh, we're going to do that for breakfast. And then the focus uh, for the other few meals is probably going to be different B vitamins. Since it's Thursday and I don't have anything that immediately needs to be done uh, down at the warehouse, I'm just going to hang out for a little bit and have some breakfast because if I go down and work for a few hours, I'm going to be so hungry and just want to come home. Little something different for breakfast today. We have cream of buckwheat, which I'm probably not going to like, but we're going to try it out as a grain source. I actually wanted cream of rice, but there's actually no organic cream of rice I could find in the store or online. So... Go figure, this is what it looks like. I mean, buckwheat isn't the best or healthiest grain, you know, not a super high fiber content, but we'll see how we like it. And this is our Iberico pork tenderloin that has been marinating in apple cider vinegar, a little bit of maple syrup, and some salt. Uh, I talked about this years and years ago. I just always forget that, you know, marinating pork and vinegar makes it digest much, much easier. I uh, don't really have to do the same thing for beef, but for some reason it makes a pretty significant difference with pork. So just had this sitting in the fridge overnight. Two or three days is good too. So we're going to have some very, very easily digestible protein for breakfast. That also tastes a little better. So I'm just going to prepare everything and we'll sit down and eat when it's ready. So it's pretty interesting how they make buckwheat. First, they get an Amish girl named Wheat and then they find a deer, a buck. <laughs> I'm not making that joke. That's, that's a horrible joke. But I'm a little out of it because this took so long to cool off. Like if you have something to do, do not make cream of buckwheat. It's like molten lava for about 25 minutes. I tasted a little bit when it came out of the pot. and It was just like a really plain grain, but the texture is nice. So I added uh, maybe two tablespoons of maple syrup, a little bit of coconut oil, and there was originally salt in the water. Now it's too cold, I'm an idiot. Because I let it cool off for like half an hour. This is really good. If you don't want as much sugar in your breakfast, if you want to control the amount of sugar, I actually like this. I like it a lot better than the homemade oats. Mainly because of the texture. It's a little reminiscent of glue though. Slightly reminiscent of glue. So we have our pork medallions. That apple cider vinegar brine. I could probably eat like two pounds of this pork. Really basic, guys. 
We got some super high quality Iberico pork for protein, cream of buckwheat for our grain and energy and starch, feed our gut bacteria. So we organize the supplements a little bit. <laughs> stuff I don't take every day on the left and stuff I might take every day on the right. So for breakfast, we are having three of the macronutrient digestive enzymes because my liver is still not working and producing the enzymes it should. We have some vitamin C. We have some magnesium. Uh, just some brief explanations on those two. Uh, our modern foods are kind of lacking antiscorbutic properties because a lot of environmental stressors, that's what the vitamin C helps for. Especially if you eat a lot of cooked food, a lot of grains and you know, your liver isn't optimally recycling vitamin C. Magnesium is almost always depleted in soil. And after doing all that research on the B vitamins, uh, I've been taking the B complex every morning, uh, usually one or two. And I've also been using the other types of B vitamins. I've actually noticed a pretty significant change in energy. I'm feeling a lot better um, using all the B vitamins. So with that, digestive enzymes, vitamin C, magnesium, B complex, we're not going to do any minerals today. Maybe I, I'll do selenium or something tomorrow. But we're also going to have some masticum with it. The only one I haven't tried yet is the B12. I think I'll try like a, a higher dose B12 tomorrow morning and see if I notice a difference. If you guys have kids, put a little bit of maple syrup on the pork tenderloin for breakfast. Love it. It'd be amazing. Now on the package, the buckwheat doesn't have that much fiber, so not something I would eat later in the day. I'm going to go to the gym, so, you know, I could burn up some of the starch. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I searched cream of rice online. None of it's organic. But honestly, with the arsenic concern in rice and all that stuff, probably better off with the buckwheat. I also really got to take the vitamin K2. I've been focusing on other stuff, like B vitamins, but you know what? Maybe this is what I need. I'm just going to do a little bit. So do like two, uh, a few drops of K2. I haven't had it in a while, to be honest. Vitamin K2 is really hard to get in the diet. It's only from fermented foods. Uh, therefore, the gut bacteria, while fermenting certain things, actually produce K2. But So uh, I'm kind of full, guys. Eight, maybe one and a half servings of buckwheat. It's not actually that calorically dense, surprisingly. And we had all the pork. Whenever I post these day of eatings now, there's a, a few shills in the comments, like trash talking grains. Oh, grain burn. Duh, duh, duh. You know, we debunked the glyphosate stuff a few months ago versus gluten. And in regards to natural procurement of a grain, it's similar to any food that grows, whether it's a fruit, you know, animals eating grass, you have to put some physical effort into getting it. But humans are meant to be mildly active all day. You know, you can't do sprints for 10 hours straight. And if you just walk at a slow pace for 10 hours straight, you know, you could have probably done a little more. So there, there's an in-between you know, a human in the field, farming, doing agriculture in a natural way, that's very, very realistic and accessible. And especially grains, the, the way they grow and the caloric availability, it's, it's not something that's considered unnatural in any capacity. But there are different types of grains and starches depending on where you're located in the world. See you guys for lunch. So I was actually so hungry when I got home for lunch that I've just been kind of nibbling on some homemade sourdough bread. And I had a few sips of water kefir while I heat my soup up. Yeah, honestly, couldn't find any decent bread. You know, even the bakery in the city I used to go to kind of went down a little bit in quality. So I made my own sourdough yesterday. I uh, had a few slices of it and uh, have been having some now while the stew heats up with some very carbonated uh, lemon water kefir. Very, very, very tasty. If you guys want me to sell a sourdough starter on Frankie's Two Range Foods, let me know. With the starter, you know, you're just a little bit of work and about a day away from bread. But if you don't have the starter, it can take like a week or two to have a viable one. So I'll probably put that on the foods website and see if uh, there's any interest in it. Uh, the difference this time with the stew is that I added some more barley and some coconut cream. So 
a lot more carbs as well as a little bit of creaminess to it, which makes it a lot more enjoyable. Uh, we used actually some of the, the fresh beef share chopped up in this instead of the tenderloin stew meat this time around. So this week, as I said, we had the fresh beef, some of it chopped up in here, organic shiitake mushrooms, organic white onion, organic russet potatoes. I put about half a bottle of organic white Riesling wine in here. Uh, maybe two jars of the collagen broth from Frankie's Syringe Meat, a bit of salt and a bit of coconut cream, and of course a few cups of barley. So that's the stew in the Instant Pot. This one tastes a lot better, maybe because of the extra barley and the, the coconut cream. Also use a different type of barley. And this bread I made, guys, a little dense. I think the oven has to be hotter, but very, very, very delicious. Very delicious. Way better than the, than the bread alone stuff. Way better than the baker I went to in the city. Now, the stew in itself is really nutritionally complete. You know, you could just eat this. Uh, since I have the liver damage, I try to have a little more carbohydrates to just soak up the bile and feed the gut bacteria as well as the apples for just a little bit of dessert and enjoyment. But if I was just going to have this stew on its own, which I have several times, that's perfectly fine too. This is really, really rich and creamy. I didn't add too much coconut cream, but you know, the starch from the barley mixed with that coconut cream is really, really nice texturally. So there's not a lot of liquid to dip the bread into. Uh, I doubled the amount of barley, but I think I got to reduce it a little bit. If we had someone to make us potato chips, I'd probably be having a roast beef sandwich right now with some chips, but I don't. I've always wanted to have my own bakery, but got to tackle the, uh, the meat business first. It's just, there's nowhere to get like high quality organic bread. Really you have to make it yourself. So maybe if you guys keep buying uh, meat from me in a few years, we'll have a Frankie's free range bakery, but we're about halfway through the meal now. So let's take some supplements. Macronutrient digestive enzymes, very, very important. Honestly, I didn't think I needed these and I stopped using them for like a few months, but since I started taking them about two weeks ago now, I've been feeling so much better. We're gonna have five of these, you know, with the amylase to break down the carbs, pepsin, trypsin, betaine, HDL for the protein, and chymotrypsin for the protein, and then we have the lipase for the fat. So with the five macronutrient digestive enzymes. I took some B3 yesterday. I took some uh, B2 the day before. Uh, I think we're gonna try a different one today. So we got B5, B6, and B7. I think I'll try the B7 today and then we'll try the other two uh, another day this week. Okay, so we'll have these. And then I'll have maybe almost a teaspoon of masticum. One time I tried to make these uh, mastic gum cookies. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Even with like a small amount of masticum in them, they just tasted completely like masticum. So for the most part, supplement wise, the base per meal is the digestive enzymes and the masticum. Uh, for lunch, I usually take uh, B vitamin, but for breakfast is when I take most of the extra stuff. So if I'm going to take minerals like selenium or manganese or boron molybdenum, any sort of minerals or higher amounts of vitamins like a B complex, I only take those in the morning. Then for lunch and dinner, just to kind of ensure I sleep as optimally as possible, you know, I don't want my liver stressing, processing so many B vitamins. So the magnesium, the vitamin C, all that stuff, always in the morning. I don't know when I'm going to make the sourdough recipe video, but we should have a sourdough starter for sale this week. So the recipe I used was, I think it was on King Arthur flour, Pan de Campania, but I used all white flour for it. Yeah, I'm hoping things move a little quicker because I've really been missing dairy in my diet as well as the eggs. And we don't have the hypoallergenic eggs on the website anymore. And we've never had hypoallergenic dairy. So you know, whenever I get my own farm and I can do my, my special feed for the animals, 
I'll be having bread and butter for breakfast every morning. <laughs> a lot of creative ideas, guys. I haven't been able to do them yet. Yeah, so like I don't even have to dip this bread into the soup. It's just really tasty on its own. Now, when I drink water kefir, I don't need or crave as much protein because there's plenty of B vitamins in this and the probiotic bacteria in the water kefir will turn the carbs in this meal into B vitamins, which is one of the main things we need from protein. I think that's everything to show you guys for lunch. I'm just gonna kind of relax, finish eating everything nice and slow, drink most of the water kefir and have my organic honey crisp apple. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know down in the comments, but we will see you for dinner. So boys and girls, it's pretty late time for dinner. I'm having the same dinner that I've been having for the past few months now. I've really, really been enjoying this. We have organic udon noodles, basically the only type of pasta I can eat that's okay for my liver. For the protein source, we have grass-fed roast beef, courtesy of Frankie's Free Range Meat. I'm gonna do a tablespoon of the collagen broth in there. And then I have a homemade white bean and artichoke puree just organic butter beans, some organic canned artichoke, and then I put a little bit of coconut cream in here and a little bit of salt, sometimes garlic and onion, but this one's pretty plain. We got our glass bottled mineral water boiling away, ready to go. So we're just going to put a bit of salt in here, some oil so it doesn't stick. So the noodles only take four minutes, which gives me just enough time to get everything else ready as well as peel my apple. Yeah, I guess about two tablespoons of the collagen broth three tablespoons of our puree. This also has some collagen broth in it. That's what gives it kind of the nice structure. So we're gonna take about half of the roast beef. Nice and rare in the middle. I'm gonna roll this up. And I'm, I'm kind of picky, you know, so sometimes I'll actually just like cut the ends off and then I'll have, you know, just the inside. Because even when you cook it rare, like sometimes the ends are still a little overdone, but after I roll it up, I just dice it up. So I just kind of sprinkle this roast beef on the noodles after I put them in the bowl. And this we're gonna save for tomorrow. I'm so tired guys, I just did everything off camera, but I just add a little bit of coconut oil and salt to the noodles in addition to that collagen broth and bean puree. Then we have the roast beef nicely on top. And I'll just peel my apple while this cools off for a minute because it's really hot. I gotta get rid of these gray sweats, guys. I do not look presentable to say the least. It's plain, you know, it's plain. I gotta add some onions and garlic to that bean puree. You know, just a little work to caramelize them. Come on guys, who else is eating a giant bowl of noodles every night? Still has a full head of hair and is chiseled out of steel. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. All right guys, about halfway through the meal, we are going to take our supplements. So I'm gonna do one vitamin B1. We're gonna do five of the macronutrient digestive enzymes, mainly because it's a lot of noodles. and our one teaspoon of masticum. I'm probably not gonna show you guys, but um, maybe like in an hour from now, right before I go to bed, I'll just take a little more masticum on its own. I mean, I would probably feel a lot better and look a lot better if I started tanning again. I haven't been a fan of you know the tanning beds because of the magnetic field. Sometimes you get a headache, but uh, the benefits probably still outweigh the negatives and since it's winter in new york i can't really go outside and tan plus like if i'm not going to get an asian baddie by now like it's not going to happen you know you know how like the asian girls like really white skinned guys i guess i'm half a foot too short for that and not ugly enough either but anyway maybe after i tan i'll just have to go for the uh the latina girls that look like asians you know what i'm talking about right like the Latina people that have kind of like Asian eyes. Like a whitewashed Latina baddie, you know? 
Honestly, bro, if I was half foot taller or if I wasn't working so much and I could clone myself, I'd probably like be in Chinatown right now trying to get some fresh off the boat baddie, you know? 100%. That's the way to go, 100%. Some Chinese farm girl to salivate over. Now that I've inhaled two pounds of noodles, I definitely feel better. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Honestly, it's just a huge amount of starch and some fiber. So the idea here is that you have a small amount of protein, the roast beef for the B vitamins, the nutrients, the animal-based proteins that we need for all the metabolic processes. The tiny amount of fat, the coconut cream in the bean puree and the coconut oil that I added, that's just enough to stimulate the liver to kind of send out some bile. And then all of the noodles, the starch uh, made from white flour and the soluble fiber in the bean puree, that's going to kind of soak up and absorb uh, those toxins from the liver. And all that starch is also going to kind of like feed the gut bacteria and keep everything happy and also uh, give me too many calories so I can be a thick boy. And I might have said this just last week, but you know, when you gain weight, when you put on fat, your body stores toxins in the fat. So it's actually a lot less stress on the liver um, if you can kind of maintain a higher weight. Oh yeah, no, I did say it last week. Then I made the joke about giving myself a fatty liver. I'm like a geese being force fed to make foie gras. All right, guys, that's it. Let me, let me wrap this up before any more nonsense comes out of my mouth today. <laughs> Uh, so I do have the sourdough starter. I might list it on the foods website. Also, I might do mastic powder. So right now we sell the mastic gum. You have to grind it up yourself. I think we might uh, try selling uh, the powder in jars and see if you guys like that a little more, a little more convenient. You guys can go to frank com to check out all of my businesses, including Frankie's Syringe Meat, where you will see all of these delicious animal products and Frankie's Syringe Foods for all the non-perishable stuff. We got organ supplements. <laughs> my... <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous, guys. <laughs> Look, it's ridiculous, but, you know, I went to God knows how many doctors and how many people until I figured it out myself, and this helps me along the way. Wi-Fi shielding, always wearing the protective clothing, and, uh, of course, Frankie's Naturals. I use the cosmetic products on a several weekly basis when I decide to shower, <laughs> um, but... As always, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. My brain is so fried, I can't remember if I said thanks already, but either way, thanks or thanks again for joining, guys. We'll see you for the next video.